Yeah, so I'm only away for three weeks and then I'll be back to record after that. All right, brilliant. Yeah, thanks. Bye, bye-bye, bye. -bye. bye. Ah, good. Hello? Yep, huh. you want my text? Brilliant. No, yeah, I can do a show by myself, no problem. <laughs> um, yeah, you can count on me. I'll get all the team in. No, yeah, lovely. Bye, sweetie. Uh, what was that about? PPI. <laughs> yeah, right. <sighs> Roll titles. For this episode of The Culture Café, we've come to Zebedee's Yard in the heart of Hull City Centre to a festival dedicated to Hull's most famous daughter, an aviator, an engineer and a celebrity from back in the day when fame could only be earned for doing something truly amazing. Welcome to this special episode of The Culture Café at the Amy Johnson Festival. <laughs> I'm fortunate to be here with one of the festival directors, Rick Welton. Hi, Rick. Hello. So, why Amy? Well, it all goes back to Larkin with Toads. If you remember what a great success that project was yeah. and how the, the Toads some, somehow took the city by storm. After the festival, after that Larkin 25 programme, people wanted to know what the next animal project was going to be. And so we spent a bit of time looking around for possible animals that we could link a, a whole programme to. And we look at anniversaries and Amy Johnson's anniversary came up, 75th anniversary of her death. And that just seemed like, a, well, she's an important figure in any she case. Is, yeah. And we thought, well, what sort of animals could you link with Amy? And we looked at things like the gypsy moth and could we use gypsies and the tigers, tiger moths. And we thought, actually, moths. And that seemed to be a great idea. And so once we got on the idea of a moth, we thought, well, that's, that's a nice project in itself, but there's actually more to Amy Johnson than just the gypsy moth plane she flew. Yeah, and can I say, it's a, it's a beautiful um, artistic addition to the city as well. I mean, I've been driving around and when I've spotted them, it's nice for them, obviously the, the toads were grounded. Yes. Uh, it's nice to see the artwork elevated. Yes, and it's an interesting, we had a lot of debates about how to make this project different to the Larkin with Toads, because we couldn't just replicate that project. It had to have its own personality, and it had to reflect Amy and her aspirations and the fact that she was a flyer, and so moths were the ideal, the ideal animal. Um, so that was the start of the festival idea, but then we started looking at just the amazing things Amy had done and it was clear that we could take Amy and her life and try and use it to inspire young people today to really go out and try and achieve something very special. You know, just to get that idea and then go out and do it, which is what Amy did. Hull is a pioneering city and a city of pioneers. But like so much of Hull culture, it's not something we like to boast about. So why did Amy Johnson capture not only the imagination of Hull, but the world? Ruby Keeble sets off in search of not only the history, but the meaning of Amy Johnson. Amy Johnson, I'm told that she is someone we should be proud of in Hull. I'm told that she is a role model. But who is she and why is she so important to the people of Hull? Let's ask the people of Hull. Who is Amy Johnson then and what do you know about her? Um, she, she was flying in an aeroplane. Like that. She was the um, first woman to fly single from England to Australia. We never found a body, she crashed into the Thames, I think, during the one. Yeah. Amy Johnson's exploits made her an international celebrity, but she was also a local girl. The world knows where she went, but where did she come from? Local historian Alec Gill has written a book that explores Amy Johnson's West Hull roots. Well, Amy Johnson was a, not only a Hull girl, but I stressed the fact she was very much a Hessel Road girl and in fact a Hesler Road tomboy and she took a high degree of pride in being a better tomboy than any of the lads at the Boulevard school where she went to you know 
and, and in a way, uh, she was a troublesome teenager. What kind of person was she during her career then when she was a little older? She was a rebel mm. and she was a pioneer for women as well. Um, and she was ahead of her time in lots of ways because um, <coughs> she wasn't a strong feminist in the way we might understand today, but if it affected her personally, like not getting paid as much money as the men in the RAF <coughs> for doing the same job, she would kick up a fuss. Amy Johnson captured the public imagination, not just in the 1930s, but right up to the present day. She did amazing things, but she also looked amazing. With striking and photogenic looks, she was a gift to the world press. Sarah Taylor has overseen the creation of an exhibition based on a new book, Amy, A Life in Pictures. Who better to ask? Not about Amy the adventurous, but Amy the icon. Did the camera love Amy? Well, Amy definitely loved the camera. Um, there's absolutely tons and tons of pictures. Um, We've um, been lucky enough to get lots of her family's photos um, from the albums. So it's a bit like all the exhibitions and the book. It's a bit like going through your grandma's old drawers and looking um, through pictures and finding things about Amy that you didn't even realise that she knew or did. So I've got fantastic pictures of her out with her friends or on the beach and trying on new outfits and just having a really good time. So how important was photography in building Amy's celebrity status? Um, massively important. The pictures that we've selected follow her journey but then they follow the celebrity status of her return journey where she stopped off at all the places and there's all these people cheering her and um, she starts to meet all these famous people and it, it just, just um, the whole kind of thing makes her an icon whereas before she was an engineer. Is Amy Johnson still an inspiration to young women? Hull School of Art and Design and its fashion students think so. This is an exhibition of style and fashion inspired by the life, looks and era of Amy Johnson. Lynn Benson worked closely with the students on this project and so perhaps knows better than anyone what Amy Johnson means to my generation. Did the students know who Amy Johnson was before this project? Yes, they did because we'd, um, we talked about them, we let them research it during the summer period so they had to come to terms with what was Amy Johnson, what did she do, where did she go and what did she sort of appreciate in the world of fashion. What did they think of Amy? Um, some of them just thought she was the lady that flew aeroplanes, so the one, ones of them admired her because really she was quite a, a forward thing for women, wasn't she? Yeah. It was a time when women were not seen as somebody who had a career and somebody who could do something revolutionary and it sort of inspired them because all the girls and boys that I teach want to do something in life and make their mark, which she did. Is Amy Johnson still relevant? She was a pilot, an engineer, an adventurer and an inspiration to other male pilots. She earned her place in history, but not because she was a woman. She's one of a small band of female pioneers who kicked open the door for the rest of us. She's a role model, not just to women, but to people with a can-do attitude. This festival is as much about engineering as it is history or art. Before Kerry went off to do, well, whatever it is she's doing, we were sent off to try our hand at a bit of engineering. Take a look what happened. Hey, how's it going, Pauline? Beautiful. Right, I'm working on a Picasso. Woo! That was a nice walk across town. Yeah, nice. I wonder what we're doing here then. It's nice and green. Yes. I mean, they said... Here we go, come oh, on. Thank you, Daisy. Thank you, Daisy. Right, give it a read then. Let's see what we're doing today. I hope it's sitting in the sun for longer. The history of Hull is peppered with heroes and heroines. Ooh. We've brought you here to the Hull History Centre to celebrate a pioneer of aviation. <gasps> I know this is. I know this is. We would like you to build a plane worthy of one of Hull's greatest daughters. <gasps> oh my God, a real plane. Oh, I love the using my hands. I'm right. good at paper aeroplane. Well, that'll come in handy. Good, right. I'm good at a jigsaw. Right, this so way. how do we get in? This way, I think. Yeah, we'll be, we've been told we need to build a plane, so what's, where's best to go to build a plane? That's definitely the Lego at the far end, if Ooh. you can find a spot anywhere. Lego <laughs> shop. Thank we'll we'll check that out first. I am not any good at Lego. Are you not? I'm just totally out my depth for you. I've got That's some... the front of the plane, he says. That's do you a... understand that? Yes. Let's don't embarrass us, pretend you know. Just if he says it's the front of the plane, yeah, great. Yeah. It's the front of the plane, yeah. He's, sure. he's getting me the bit. He's getting us the bit, right. Right. 
I, I'm improvising a little bit because we've only got one wing. Yeah. I've gone with them as wings. Oh, they look good. That's, that's all right, isn't it? I need to build a bit of height up. Oh, well, i got, what about? You got any, like, little I've got some red ones. Carrie, I think we've got another envelope. Oh, what is this? Now we've built our plane. We've been flexing our we are ready. engineer muscles. <laughs> Thank you very much, Daisy. OK, so let's have a see what's uh, next then. Oh, have I opened it right? Here we are. <laughs> so now that you have built your wonderful flying machine, you just need to top it off with a perfect accessory. So make yourselves a pair of flying goggles. Oh, yes, uh, then. Elton John is going to be jealous of this one. I'm going to go with pink to represent girl. Are we staying in the lines? I always stay in the lines. OK. So here we are. After you on that. With a turbulence. And off. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. And fly it and then and then bring it on the runway. On the runway. On the Well that's a bit of a disaster, isn't it? I think that's a crash landing. Join us after the break where I'll be exploring more of the festival and we'll be finding out why engineering and art are such close companions. Welcome back to the Culture Cafe at the Amy Johnson Festival. Now, 80 years ago, Amy was thoroughly a modern girl. And this is equally a modern festival. It's got so much digital content. And what we've done is we've selected a brief taster of that for you. So what we've chosen is one of the 75 second videos which have been commissioned that's either about or inspired by Amy Johnson. Enjoy. Amy Johnson's gift was not as a pilot, but as an engineer. It was this as much as her bravery and determination that enabled her to take part in world record in aviation. With this in mind, so much of the festival is dedicated to engineering, and never more so than here at Da Vinci Engineered Exhibition in Zebedee's Yard. But why is there engineering in an art gallery? Louise Brown discovers all. There is a pervasive belief that the arts and the sciences are two separate cultures and that if we explore the world too closely, we somehow destroy our creativity. But it wasn't always this way. For Leonardo da Vinci, the laboratory and the artist studio were the same place. This installation by the artist duo Heinrich and Palmer was created in partnership with engineers from the University of Hull. I'm here with one of those engineers, someone for whom Leonardo is perhaps not an artist with an engineering bent, but an engineer who can also handle a paintbrush. Stephanie Hayward is Head of Electrical and Electronic Engineering at the University of Hull. So if you had to explain to me who Leonardo da Vinci is, would you describe him as an engineer or an artist? 
Oh, um, I think he's both, absolutely both. I mean, I mean he's the uh, typical polymath, isn't he? He, he did absolutely everything. He, uh, he, he designed beautiful um, objects, he created novel, innovative machines, and he made them in some cases as well. And he, uh, he was very interested in the human body. So he was interested in everything from biology, engineering, mm -hmm. art, the whole spectrum of, um, of, of human activity, I would say. Mm -hmm. So how would you describe the relationship between art and science? Um, I, I think uh, they both need each other. They're, they're symbiotic. I, I don't think that they're, they've always been perceived as being opposite ends of the spectrum. But, but actually, in a way, I think they meet in engineering mm. because I think very much the artist has a similar a very similar job to do as, as an engineer. So quite often an artist is given a commission, a brief, mm. they have timescales to meet, they mm. have a budget to meet, and, and they have to produce something at the end. And very often they're using engineering and particularly maths in order to produce things. Mm. So if you look around this exhibition, um, there, there are very many areas where you could say you, you have to have had some mathematical skills to, to draw the circles in that picture over there, mm. to, to design the um, sculpture behind us. So, um, uh, and an engineer behaves in a very similar way. Quite often you have a different goal at the end, quite a, a more practical goal at mm -hmm. the end, but the, the process of getting there is often very similar. Mm -hmm. Sabine Bieli, another exhibitor, is an artist for whom creative vision is intimately tied to the geometry and the physical nature of the material she uses. So can you tell me how important materials are to you in your work and, and in this in particular? Materials um, come up via the idea, or the other way around, mm -hmm. they define what I do. How so experimental are you? How? I did quite a few small case, small scale pieces in this style, and it took a while to develop the technique. And it always takes a while until your hands know what they are doing and they, until they learn the language. Lara Goodband is the curator of this exhibition and so has spent several months exploring the intersection of the arts and engineering. I wanted to know what connects these two disciplines. Well, all of the artists I've selected um, make art in conversation with other people from other disciplines or, or communities and um, when Ruth Levine for example worked with um, the Department of Engineering at the Sheffield University um, she was able to literally tap a new source and that was um, navigate the, the water sources that we don't see, the sewers and um, the water that we drink that's managed by Yorkshire Water mm -hmm. for us and she's produced really beautiful prints and drawings mm -hmm. and she could only do that by talking to engineers about what happened with waste and water. Art and engineering are both creative activities even if they often meet very different human needs. We should remember this whenever we are tempted to assume that artists and scientists have created two separate cultures. More importantly, we should remember this when politicians assume that education can be either creative or technical. If it isn't both, then it's neither. Amy Johnson, just one of the reasons to be proud of Hull and its people. But what a reason. 75 years after her death and she is still an inspiration. We're going to end the show with two musicians who have both been inspired by this pioneer.
I missed much while I've been away? Well, uh, they only got me to do my own show. Yeah, yeah, about a whole role model and heroine. Oh, ah. What about you? Well, I got married. You always have to go one better, don't you? Roll credits. 